Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna continue working on our 2020 Acura RDX A-Spec all-wheel drive. Last time we got our piece in there and all welded up and the bodywork gnome did his bodywork. Our painting gnome edged out underneath of our hinges and all the rest of our parts. So today we're going to put our door together, uh, get it fitted up here and line up our hinges and we'll pull the door back off so that he can paint the pillar and rocker just like the factory did with everything on it. Uh, we also need to put the rest of our parts on, our fender, our hood, and our headlight just to fit everything. We had some brackets up there that need to be straightened out and then painted. So let's get everything together, get our brackets straightened out so that they can paint everything all at once. And hopefully it'll be ready for them to paint the outside by the time we're done with the video. Hopefully, we're not gonna get anything done talking about it. So let's get started. First part we're gonna pull off is our hood because it's kind of in the way of everything else. But before we can remove the hood, we have to remove our hood insulation to get to our washer hose. And we're already dropping parts. I hope that's not an indication of how the rest of the day is gonna go. So we got our hood liner down. Now we can get our washer hose disconnected. Very carefully, try not to break that fitting. It's just plastic. We can pop all the clips out that hold our washer hose onto the hood. And it's also attached to our hinge. We'll pull that out of the way. We can start on bolting our hood. There's three bolts. We're going to take the first two all the way out and then just loosen up that rear one. And decided to pull it all the way out and risk it. Not a very heavy hood, so I just got to make sure it doesn't slide back into the windshield because that's a very expensive windshield. And now we'll unbolt the other side. There's one bolt. We can get the next one. And that sound you heard was the bolt headed for Narnia. So we're going to have to go find that later. Right now I got my hands full. Grab the back of the hood and lift it off. Nice and light. Glad it's aluminum. I've taken on the role of search and rescue. We're going to go find that bolt we dropped. We never heard that great stress relieving sound of it hitting the floor. So it's in here somewhere. We'll pull this little filler out between the fender and the door and pull it back a little bit. See if we can see it. And we can see it. So we're just going to grab our magnet and see if we can get it out of there. It's sitting right on top of the little bracket for the fender. Recovery successful. So now let's button this all back up so we can pretend like we didn't drop the bolt in there and cost us an extra couple minutes of time. We'll just stuff that filler back in there behind the fender and put our little push pin in there. Never speak of this again. All right, now we can go back to what we were supposed to be doing. Pull a little hood shock off of our hood hinge. And then we can unbolt our hood hinge. Peel it off of there. In the pile. There's nothing worse than premature pile deployment. Rookie move. Okay, in the pile for real. Now we can put our new hood hinge on. I did put a little seam sealer on the bottom of the hinge around where the bolt holes go. There was some stuff in there from the factory and it kind of squished out and I didn't clean it up because that will be a nice guide for me to put it back where it was. There is a little bit of adjustment on there. So we'll line it up and tighten it down. And we can put the little bracket for our hood strut on there. That's what we forgot on our other hinge. Tighten it down to manufacturer specs. Click, and we'll clip our hood shock on there. Now we can toss our hood up there and hopefully not destroy the windshield. We got a little rag on the driver's side so the hood can set on that. We won't scratch our fender. And that'll hold that side, and I'll go over the other side and put the bolt in it right away. This job is a lot easier with two people, but it can be done by yourself. And we all know why I do it by myself. Say it with me, because I have no friends. Once we get one bolt started, we're out of harm's way. Or at least the windshield is. We'll go to the other side, put a bolt in that one. We need to get them all started before we tighten them up because there is a little bit of adjustment on here, not too much. Just enough to make sure that if you tighten one up, you won't be able to get the next bolt started. So we'll just start them all ahead of time. And we're gonna try and put it back where the old one was. 
See how close that gets us. Snug everything up. Flip in our washer line. We'll tuck it up here in the hood. We'll put our washers in later after they paint it. And we can go over to our door. We gotta scuff our hinges. The part that the bolts are gonna go through and the part that's going to be up against our pillar. A lot easier to do it now than after it's installed, just to make sure that we get in every little crevice. That looks pretty good. We have some random pocket bolts, so we'll see if these fit in here. We can use them. And these are self-aligning, so we just got to get the shoulders started through the hinge and tighten them down. Then we'll be able to take the door back off later and it'll line right back up. Scuff our other hinge. And bolt that one in. We're going to need to start swapping over our guts from our old door into our new door. I want as much weight on that door as possible when I hang it so that there's a little less adjustment later on. Pull the screws out from underneath the grab handle. We'll pop the little cover out of the back of our handle. There's a couple more screws hidden in there. Now just a little wiggle and pull. And the door panel is off. One of my harness to disconnect. And we'll slide our handle off of there. And our door panel is off. So when I used to take these apart, I used to just pop this clip off of here and pull these two cables off and leave the handle in the door panel. And that wasn't actually very difficult, but then I got that 22 that was already taken apart and they did it differently. They took it out like this. So I thought I'd try that. Turns out this is way easier. You just pull back on this and it slides off. There's a tab that goes inside here. That's it. Doing it this way from now on. This is that little tab. You just slide it in there and it'll hook on this. And then when it's the bolts go through here, it holds it all together. So when it's unbolted, you just pull it back a little bit, slide it off that tab. Way easier. I'm learning. I'm gonna pull the rubber baby buggy bumpers off. There's probably only one way to do this, at least the right way. And we'll reinstall them. They are adjustable, so we'll try and put them back right where they were. Pull the screw out of our door speaker and pop it out of there with our speaker removal tool, our speaker hammer, and unplug it. I'll start unclipping our wiring harness that's inside. Just squeeze the tabs. We'll unclip the ones that are on the inside and clip the other wiring harness in that we just unclipped. Put the clip out for our speaker. Now we're going to peel our water barrier off. This is the reusable kind. Honda didn't use the gooey fun stuff on the Acuras. That's only for the cheap Hondas. Pay all this extra money you get reusable water barriers, I guess. Pop the rest of our harness off. Got to make sure we save the little gasket that's in there. We don't want that clip to rattle. Pull our trim around the window off. There is one plug on the back that goes to our blind spot monitor. It's the little light that lights up when there's a car in your blind spot. We can pull our tweeter out of here. Just a couple of screws in it. And then one plug. We have another piece of our water barrier. 
So satisfying to pull those off of there. Also stressful. You don't want to rip them. But if you warm them up a little bit, they do come off. They're pretty forgiving. And they stick right back on. Pop more of our wiring harness off of here. Stick the little gasket back on that got stuck to the door. And we got a present. It's a door check we dropped in there earlier. One last piece of the water barrier. Pull that off. And continue unclipping our wiring harness. Pop some of our little rubber caps out of the door. And now that I told you about my door handle epiphany, uh, we have to take it apart my way anyway. We need to get the cables out of here so we can get them through the door. So. Push in the little tab and open up the little door on the back. Oh, wow. And just unclip the cables. Not that. That's hard. But. We'll push the little grommet out that our cables go through. And we'll stuff our cables back in there. Now we're going to pull our outside door handle off, pop the little cap off, and we'll loosen up the bolt that was tightened by Hercules. That'll allow us to pull the cap off the back. Pull back on the handle and pull it down. Disconnect the wire that's inside and pull it out of there. And we can start unbolting the rest of our door latch. It appears Mr. Spotty is finally back to work. He was on vacation. He was sailing his yacht around the Bahamas. Now we can unbolt our window from the regulator. I did manage to remember to put the window down a little bit, making this job a lot easier. And we'll pull the glass out of here. Try not to mess up the tint. I'm gonna have to pay for that again. We can unbolt the rest of our regulator. Pull it down. Now we can unplug the regulator, which is a lot easier when it's not bolted into the door. Then we can figure out how to get it out of here. Looks like it goes through here. There's a little less room in this door. It's a little smashed. One bolt the back window track, slide it out of there. And we can loosen up our handle for the outside. This is the base. Stuff our cables through there and pull our latch assembly out. And pull our base for the outside handle out. And put our base in our new door. Just slides in. Slide it to the back, and then tighten up that bolt. It draws the plastic through the door and pinches it in there. We're going to tighten it up for now, but we're going to take this back out for when he paints the outside of the door. That little hole right there is where the rod from the base to the outside handle slides into. There's no clips or anything. You just slide it up in there. If you look through the hole where the latch goes, you can get it lined up and slide it up in there. Once you have that rod engaged, you can put the whole assembly up into the door and slide it in place and start the bolts. Tighten it up so it doesn't fall out of there. Now we can pull our cables through and push the grommet into the door. Make sure it's clipped in there all the way. We'll snug up the bolts on our latch. Click. We can snap in all the plastic caps since we got to all the screws that are behind them. And we can drop our window channel in here. Clip it up into the door and bolt the back of it in. We'll pop out all the little plastic retainers so we can screw our screws in later. Just squeeze the tabs on the back. Can't get to this one, so we're gonna use a pick to squeeze the tabs and launch across the shop. So it's like our game of hide and seek is on. We'll pop our 
containers back in there and we did find that other one, so we have all five. Now we can start pulling our wiring harness out of here. I'm gonna pull it all through the speaker hole right now. We need to try and get it through the hole in the door where the grommet goes, and it's a little smaller than it's supposed to be. So we basically have to pull one plug through at a time and hope they fit. Otherwise, we're gonna have to get our favorite tool and make that hole a little bit bigger. But we got them all out of there. Putting it back in, it's gonna be a little easier. You can kind of just funnel them in there and shove it in there. A lot more room on this door. Just tuck it in there for now. Don't worry about the grommet and the door first, and the rest of the wiring harness later. Make sure we put it in the right way. It does say up on it. Flip it in. And then we can start routing it throughout our door where it belongs. Push our grommet in there and clip our harness in. Drop our regulator in here. A little more room in this door. the nuts on there, plug it in, and tighten it all down. And we put our first piece of the water barrier in there, stick it right back on the door, push it on there and make sure it's going to stay. If you're going to be taking these doors apart and storing those pieces for a little while before you try and stick them back on, you can always put some wax paper over them. It will keep them from getting stuck to everything else, and that Sticky stuff on the back will still be usable. I just put them off to the side and stuck them right back on the door so I didn't have to do all that. Plugged in our tweeter so we can screw that in now. Now we can plug in our speaker, slide the bottom tab on into the door, and put our bolt in the top and tighten it up. Click. One last piece for our water barrier. There's some little indents in it to help you line it up. Press it on. We're going to end up peeling it down a little bit later, but at least it's on here and the sticky stuff won't adhere itself to anything else. We're going to unbolt our front window channel. Pull our window sweep out of here. Unbolt what's left of our mirror because we're going to need the bolts. I don't think we're going to use that mirror again. We'll pull the window channel out of the track. And then slide our track out of the door. We'll slide our track in our new door. Probably would have been easier to put this in before I put the whole rest of the bottom of the door together, but yeah, we'll get it. Bolt it in. And somewhere along the line, I did put the window channel in there. So now we can drop our glass in here. Still trying not to mess up this tin. And of course, I didn't clean the bottom of the window that you're never going to see. Slide our glass down. Bolt it into the regulator. And tuck our water barrier back in there. Put our window sweep in. Now we're going to reattach our handle to our cables so that I don't forget where I put it and end up losing it. Put the ends of the cables in the handles. Clip the cables in there and close the little door. And it's done. Our little plastic caps in for our regulator. We can go get our door ready to put on our car. We're going to scuff underneath the hinges for the same reason we scuff the hinges, just so that we get everything a lot easier now than later. Now we're going to put a little seam sealer around our bolt holes. 
as Honda did. It doesn't have to look pretty. It's all going to squish out of there as soon as we put the hinge over it. Now we'll put our door up there. It's a little bit heavier now that all the guts are in it. We got most of the stuff in there, so the door should hang about where it belongs. We might have to adjust it a little bit later. But we definitely would have had to adjust it quite a bit if we would have hung it with the door being empty. Open up all of our bolts. Had to go with the primitive caveman tools because the electric tools wouldn't fit in there. Oh well, they were probably dead anyway. We'll check our door and make sure it fits. Our gap looks nice. So we're ready to start putting the rest of it together. We need to put this bracket on for the bottom of our fender. We'll have to hold the nut cert because it got ripped out. And we need the bolt that it attaches it. Bolt that bracket in. That bracket was actually brand new from Honda and left over from our 22 that I had done. I accidentally ordered it and I didn't need it and never returned it in the pile. So I had no choice but to buy another rebuild that needed it because I didn't want to lose that $17. We have to drop the bumper down a little bit so we can get to the bracket for our fender and straighten it out. So we'll pull the clips out of the top of the grill and we'll unbolt the bottom of the bumper. There's supposed to be some plastic push pins in there, but they didn't survive. Now the bumper's down a little bit, we can get this bracket out for our fender. And straighten up the little tabs that are welded onto our radiator support. No reason to change it, we can just bend it back a little bit. We'll pop our cowl screen extension out of there. and loosen up the bolt that used to hold the back of our fender in. Now we're going to tempt fate and try not to break our windshield while we straighten out this little bracket for the back of our fender. We're doing all this now so you can paint it later. Now we can put our fender up there. And it appears the supervisor wants to inspect my work. She's here for that write-up that I got earlier for hostile work environment. Mr. Spotty reported me. We'll open up the door and we'll start the bolt in the back. And of course, a car door opens and the supervisor thinks she's going for an RIDE. No. Now she hangs her head in disappointment and leaves when she finds out we're not going anywhere. We can put that bolt in the top of the fender. Check our gap. Looks pretty good at the top. So we'll move the bottom of the fender around a little bit and tighten that up. We can start tightening up the rest of the bolts along the top of the fender. We'll tighten one up in the front for the bracket we just straightened. Now we can remove the bumper bracket that's supposed to be mounted to the bottom of the headlight. We had to get a new one since our old one was broken. But we needed the bolts out of it. One was left in there and the other one we found when we took the bumper off earlier. I'll we'll straighten out this little tab where our headlight bolts on the upper tie bar. Push down on a little bit and tap the kink out of it. And we can unbolt the rest of our headlight. And drop our new headlight in here. There's a couple tabs in there. You slide it back, they clip in and hold it in place while you get the bolts in it. That's how it's supposed to work anyway. But for me, I clip the tabs in there and it falls on the floor just before I get the bolts in it. Put the hood and check how everything fits. I bought some bubble wrap and I got a free hood. It's pretty expensive bubble wrap. It is satisfying to peel off of our hood. Of course it didn't work. There is one little ding in the middle of our hood. We can unbolt our headlight, since everything fits the way it should, and pop it out of there and go put it somewhere safe.
far away from me. Now that we know that everything fits and we have the supervisor's approval here, uh, we can take it all apart. We're gonna pull the fender off and pull the door off. That way they can paint everything in there. And then we'll throw it back together one more time. That's why I didn't show you all the gaps because they're all right, trust me. And it doesn't matter because we're gonna be putting it together anyway. And I'll show it to you then because I know we have trust issues. So let's get it all apart and ready for them to paint. We'll even take the front bumper off because we're gonna have to do it eventually anyway. We don't have to pull our hood off. It won't be in the way for them to paint everything, but we do have to pull our fender off of here. So we'll start with that. We still haven't broken the windshield, so we're still being careful around it. Open up our door so we can get that bolt in the back. And we're multitasking. Using a foot as a door check. One last bolt on the top of the fender here. And the fender slides off of there. We'll go put that back in the box. And we did paint the inside, even though Honda didn't. A little extra rust protection. Now we can unbolt our door. We're gonna leave the hinges on, let them paint those. So when we put our door back up, it'll self-align. And we tighten those bolts up that have the shoulders. And of course, the door opens and the supervisor is waiting. Now we can pull this bracket off at the bottom of the fender. That way you can paint underneath it, even though you already painted the bracket for us. And now it's playtime. The supervisor wants to go outside and play, so we're going to go play. Back to work. Supervisor is worn out. She's taking her post. So now we're going to pull the rest of our bumper off of here. There's a couple of bolts left in the bottom that we hadn't taken out. Pull those out of there. I think there's another one in here. There it is. One screw at the end, a bunch of push pins that hold our wheel liner to the bumper. One screw at the top of the wheel liner, and one screw that holds our bumper to our fender. And a little wiggle and pull, and our bumper should come off, but this one doesn't want to. So we're going to release the clips on the bracket so that we don't break the bracket. I might use this bumper. I'll have to see what it's apart, how bad the end of it is. But I also don't want to break the bumper bracket. Once you get one tab started, a little wiggle and pull and it'll come apart. I'll we'll clip it from the bracket under the headlight. And there's a lot of wiggle and pull for the clip that goes under the headlight. And the bumper's off. All brackets, clips, and tabs survived. So we've gone about as far as we can go for today until the painting gnome comes in and paints our A-pillar and our brackets for our fender. As soon as he does that, we can throw our door back on, throw our fender back on, and start prepping it for him to paint and maybe even change some airbags. We'll do all that next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you when it's blue.